I find to get into nature is extremely helpful. To get alone in nature, to begin to look deeply at yourself. In fact, one of the stories I really like was this person who was filled with some kind of disease he couldn't identify. Went to see his friend who was also a physician. Can you help me? I don't know what it is. I just don't feel good. It's just a kind of a general malaise and a, I don't have much energy. Can you help me? The friend knew this person well. He talked for a period of time and then he said, yes, I think I can help you. I have four prescriptions, but you must follow them implicitly. Where is your favorite place? Well, what do you mean? When you were a boy, what did you look forward to the most? Where did you like to be? He said, oh, the beach. I mean, all year long, we would think about the beach. And every chance we had, we would go to the beach. We would have family times. I did so much. He said, fine. He writes out the prescriptions. Go to the beach and spend the day following these prescriptions. What do you do? Don't you, medicine? Follow the prescriptions. You're, you're kidding. Wait till you see my bill. No, no, no. <laughs> but you can't take anything. No radio, no reading material, no books, no magazines. Just get deep into nature. First prescription. You take at nine. The next one at 12. The next one at three. And the next one at six. He arrives at the beach, walks down from his car, pulls out the prescription. Listen carefully. Two words. Listen carefully. What could this possibly mean? See, he's in his private life, isn't he? I mean, I've listened to everything I can hear right now. I'm finished. And I have to do this for three hours. <laughs> okay, I heard those birds. Yeah, got it. I hear the surf coming in. I can even hear sand crabs if I listen very carefully. I, I can hear them. I can hear the, the wind blowing. I can hear the rustle. Isn't that interesting? The more I listen, the more I can hear. He's starting to silence himself. To get quiet. To slow down this frantic pace of his public life and his disenchanted private life. He almost, after a period of time, becomes euphoric. He's so peaceful. He just hasn't felt this way. He's getting deeper into his inner life. He's almost loath to take the second prescription because he has really enjoyed this first one. He pulls out the second one. Three words this time. Try reaching back. That throws him. What could this possibly mean? Try reaching back. Well, maybe I should start thinking about the past. So he started to get into his memory. You know, I remember after school I can remember the excitement we had. I can remember my brother. What a choice association. He became very nostalgic, very emotional. He remembered running down the beach after school with his brother, just screaming like wild people that just couldn't get enough of this fresh air, this, this scene, this freedom, and the excitement, and how they would just kind of dance around and, and hug each other and they would have family times and they would play in the surf and the water and build castles and this thing went on for three more hours 
And he was even more loath to move to the third prescription. This time, though, he was really deep into his inner life, which contains so much of memory. Third prescription. This was the tough prescription. This was the core prescription. The other two were in preparation for this one. This drove him into his deep inner life with enormous force. Re-examine your motives. For three hours, re-examine his motives. What is my center? What is my vision? What is my mission? What is my core? What is it I'm about? This was tough, really tough. He began to observe a pattern. He began to discover that he had put at the center of his life himself his own need fulfillment, that he was selfish. Even some of his so-called selfless activities were selfish in that he wanted to be known for them. There was nothing anonymous, deeply anonymous in his service to others. His private life was different than his public. He would put on that he was caring, but inwardly there was some selfish motive that was being served inside himself. And he started to come to an awareness, his malaise, his boredom, his disease was of the spirit, the selfishness of his life that his whole motive structure was improperly centered, not on true contribution. And he spent much of that time reorganizing, reorienting, replanting new motives, new desires, those that were congruent with higher principles. And that was the creative part. He started using his imagination instead of just living out of his memory. You see, when you live out of your memory, you focus upon the past. When you live out of your imagination, you focus on the future. What lies behind us is nothing compared to what lies within us and ahead of us. But it took this self-analysis, this self-awareness, this self-exploration to get him to the point where he was really willing to explore, to examine his motives, and to cultivate new ones. When six o'clock came, he had finished. For the first time, he knew, I know what my life is about. I know what I'm not about, too. I know the cause of my problem. I haven't yet healed it but I know what the direction is I want to take. So he takes out the last prescription, and it says, now write your troubles in the sand. He takes a piece of shell and goes to the high water mark and makes a few markings on the sand. And the last sentence is, and the tide was coming in. It's a beautiful story. It contains a lot of real wisdom in it. It teaches you, don't start writing your mission statement yet. Prepare to write it. Now, maybe you've been preparing for a long period of time. Maybe you've done some of this deep inner work, and you're prepared for it. Everyone is at a different place. Try to tap into your sense of vision. What are your unique gifts? Use self-knowledge. Take time. Listen to those who see the potential in you. Listen to them. Sense their affirmation of you. Study the lives of people who have inspired you, of heroes. What is it you so admired? So you can get a sense of what principles you want to build upon. You want to write a mission statement that is timeless. You want to write something that will never change. Now, in fact, 
as you mature and your consciousness raises and so forth, you will change it. But you write it as if it will never change. That's the source of integrity. And integrity is the source of power. In your integrity around a balanced set of principles that you yourself have settled on.